2015 May, uh, we traveled to California, Southern California. Uh, we flew to Los Angeles and then uh, drove through the mountains to the desert. We actually went to India. We spent a week in India. Uh, it was an amazing place to be. It's uh, the cities, the surrounding cities are Palm Spring, Palm Desert, La Quinta. Um, they are full of interesting things to do. They are very close to the Joshua Tree National Park. Uh, we have mountains surrounding this valley. And one of the most interesting things in this valley is the Salton Sea. The Salton Sea is a pretty amazing place. I've never heard about it before. But um, I researched it for our trip and I learned a whole lot of very, very interesting things about it. So I've decided to put together this video uh, and I can give you all the information I, I gathered and I hope you can enjoy it. So come along with me first. Let's see what is really Salton Sea and what's happening there. Take a look around. This is some of the hottest, bleakest terrain on the planet. Summer temperatures here can reach over 125 degrees Fahrenheit, where unprotected humans can dehydrate and die in a matter of hours. It's the last place on Earth you'd expect to find any water at all, let alone a huge inland sea. This is the land of the Salton Sea in the desert of Southern California. An amazing 35 miles long and 15 miles across, little known, largely ignored and misunderstood, this desert ecosystem is critical to hundreds of species and it's in a lot of trouble. The Salton Sea and its drainage are located in the desert of Southern California. The Mojave Desert lies to the north and to the south, the Sonoran Desert. The Salton Sea is in the area of San Diego, the Imperial Valley, and the Gulf of California. The Salton Sea is home to hundreds of species. It's a place of unimaginable biodiversity, and it faces almost certain destruction unless something is done, and quickly. The Salton Sink is a low-lying area nestled between the San Jacinto Fault Zone to the west and the San Andreas Fault Zone to the east. The Salton Sink itself is an amazing 280 feet below sea level. Even the surface of the sea is 227 feet below sea level. Here in this animation we see the ancient Gulf of California at the present day Yuma, Arizona, the Colorado River entered the Gulf. During those days, the Gulf of California extended all the way up to the present day Indio, California, which is very near the town of Palm Springs. At the delta of the Colorado River, silt was deposited and throughout the years that silt closed off the Gulf of California, leaving only a desert lake to the north, which is the present area of the Salton Sea. As years went by, that sea dried up, having no water coming into it. It became once again a bleak desert. But in true form, the Colorado River flowed on. At that point, Yuma, Arizona and the Gulf of California, as now, were some 70 miles apart. But the Colorado River, once again, changed its course to the north, no longer entering the Gulf of California, but entering the Salton Sink, building another huge lake as it had before. As the lake filled up, it actually began to spill over and a new and now that we learned about the lake, uh, uh, history of this area back to the and Gulf the formation, let's see the geology. The lake was called Lake Cahuilla. Once again, the Colorado River shifted as it did many times in history, flowing back to the south and abandoning 
the salt and sink area. Once again, the lake dried up. The salt and sink was inhabited by scores of Native Americans and first explored by the early Spanish explorers, but in 1850, gold was discovered west of here in California. The gold fever hit hard and the rush to California and the riches that just lie waiting to be gathered up convinced some hardy souls that waiting for the snows to clear to take the safer northern route was not acceptable. Many tried the southern route through the Salton Trough. Some made it and many didn't. By the late 1800s, it was clear that the entire area of the Salton Trough could become an agricultural paradise. With green fields and workers, it could be an amazing place as it is today. But what was missing was water. There simply wasn't any. It was with this in mind that the California Development Company set about a grand scheme to bring water to the desert. Canals were dug diverting Colorado River water to the Salton Trough. Shares of water were sold and the desert began to bloom into an incredible agricultural community. Then the unexpected. The Colorado River had some high record stream flows and the amazing amount of silt the Colorado carries clogged the foundling canal systems. The danger of losing their entire investment hung over the California Development Company. Their attempt at digging a new canal was thwarted by the Colorado and between 1905 and 1907 the full force of the Colorado River entered the Salton Basin. The current Salton Sea was created. And so the latest incarnation of the Salton Sea had begun. Towns sprung up around it. Nobody believed it would last. After all, there was no Colorado River to fill it anymore since the dikes were repaired in 1907. It was estimated that the sea would be gone by 1923. Well, it wasn't. The increased runoff from irrigation sustained the levels of the sea, and it remains with us today. But now, with decreased stream flow from the Colorado River, the salinity of the Salton Sea continues to rise, already 25% higher than the Pacific Ocean. If this continues, within 10 years, most of the life surrounding the Salton Sea will be gone. The Salton Sea is America's most southern stop off of the Pacific Flyway. Over two-thirds of all species of birds in America winter or stop off at the Salton Sea. Its loss would be an ecological tragedy for birds that frequent not only the West Coast, but all over the U.S., Canada, South America, and Mexico. This map shows areas of the Northern Hemisphere where birds tagged at the Salton Sea have been spotted. The elimination of this critical wetland could be devastating to bird populations. The Salton Sea is a critical habitat. Many other animals of the Salton Sea are endangered. The tilapia, a popular game fish, will die to the tune of 90 million. And now that we learn about the formation and the history of the Salton Sea, let's see about its geology. Uh, the area is very, very active, geologically extremely interesting place, so let's see. Earthquakes are common in the Gulf of California, continuing in a fairly linear trend southeastward from the state of California. Stepping back, we see that these earthquakes define the southwestern margin of the North American plate between California and Middle America. Here, we'll focus on the Gulf of California rift zone, a divergent margin which is propagating into California. It is a transitional corridor that connects the East Pacific Rise Spreading Ridge to the south with the San Andreas Fault Zone in California.
Extension and strike slip faulting are causing Baja California to separate away from mainland Mexico, thereby opening the Gulf of California as though it were being unzipped. In reality, the waters of the Gulf of California hide connecting stair-stepping seafloor spreading ridges with right lateral strike slip motion on classic transform faults. This collection of faults and ridges forms a continental rift system that is tearing the Pacific Plate apart from the North American Plate. If we zoom in, we can see the processes occurring. As the lithospheric plates move apart, heat rises beneath the mid-ocean ridge. Magma forms at shallow pressures and creates new rock at the spreading ridges. The plates move away in conveyor belt-like fashion. Movement between the ridges is accommodated by transform faults where large earthquakes occur due to friction between the plates. Smaller earthquakes also occur along the ridges. Backing out to map view, we see the simplified San Andreas fault system cutting through California. As the movement of the plates continues along this plate boundary, it is forcing Baja California away from Mexico and causing Santa Barbara and San Diego to migrate northward toward San Francisco. Zooming into this smaller region for a more detailed look, we will go back 20 million years to watch how the Gulf and coastal areas developed. This animation by Tanya Atwater shows a tectonic model for the 20 million year evolution of the region, depicting the rotation of the transverse range blocks, the breakup of the continental shelf, as well as the opening of the Gulf of California as the Pacific Plate grinds northward against the North American Plate. The Baja California Peninsula, and most of southwestern California, is a remnant of the North American continent that was sheared off and moved to its present position. Earthquakes in the Gulf are more of a nuisance than a threat. However, the on-land part of this spreading ridge extends into Baja California, Mexico, and the Imperial Valley of California, where it is transitioning from ridge transform boundary to the continental boundary. This area is especially vulnerable because it's underlain by soft sediment. So after all this information, do you think that could be possible in this area to see some big earthquakes and volcanoes? Let's see this little movie right here. The possibility of a lava spewing disaster in our region seems fictional, or is it? Oh, most definitely volcanic activity is possible. Geologist Pat Abbott knows firsthand what is hidden below. Boiling water. He was in the helicopter as this footage was shot of muddy pits belching volcanic gases about a hundred miles to our east on the southern end of the Salton Sea, the home of four buttes. This is one of the buttes, a small volcano with an explosive past. Miles below is a 15 mile wide pool of magma. This was taken right from the Buttes. It's obsidian. About 8,000 years ago, the Buttes erupted, the magma flowed, and eventually cooled into obsidian. The damage of those eruptions was limited to the surrounding area, but if the big one hit along the San Andreas Fault... Really pumped a lot of energy into that new freshly enlarged magma body, that would be like a worst-case scenario. This 10 use virtual view shows what could happen. Unstable magma finding a path to the surface, erupting, oozing lava and spewing ash. While the ash fallout we saw in Iceland is a remote possibility, a USGS geologist recently said in a newspaper article, I would not anticipate an Iceland eruption, but we didn't anticipate Mount St. Helens either. Even if the ash cloud is small, it could still wreak havoc, altering flight plans. For the ash to come to San Diego County, uh, you'd have to have a Santa Ana. An unlucky mix of conditions could send the ash our way, causing breathing issues. An unlikely scenario, but one that's lurking beneath the surface. <laughs>